Hey guys, so I'm back to my old setup. I am finally back in the United States. As you guys know, I've been traveling around Europe, well, Eastern Europe for the past two weeks and I am so exhausted. Uh, I thought it would be really appropriate to do a travel hacks video just because I feel like I have learned so much on this trip. So I'm gonna give you guys some traveling advice, especially because summer is right around the corner and I bet a lot of you guys are thinking of traveling. Now before you guys listen to my hacks, I would really, really appreciate it if you click that thumbs up button. It helps out my channel so much and it just makes me feel very, very loved. So go and click that like button. So the first hack involves fear of traveling. If you guys know me pretty well, you'll know that I am very fearful of flying. If you have a fear of flying or any kind of fear of travel, I know right now especially like things are just crazy in the world. I know for all of us, paranoid people, it can really weigh us down and stop us from going places and experiencing things. Life is too short to just sit in your room and worry about things, but if, if that's not enough, because I know for me that's not enough, uh, I recommend if you get on a plane or a train taking some Tylenol PM maybe because it'll help you doze off, it'll make you tired, drinking some chamomile tea, pulling an all-nighter right before your trip. I know that's helped me a bunch because if I don't sleep the night before a flight, I'll get on the plane and I'll pretty much like pass out. Something that I have done the past few flights that I've been on and I only really do this for transatlantic flights because something about being over the ocean for a long time and not having anywhere nearby that's land freaks me out so I have my doctor prescribe me Xanax. I am prescribed one milligram pills. I usually just take one for like an eight or nine hour flight and I'll be pretty much fine the entire time. As soon as I take it, I feel very, very tired. I actually end up sleeping for like half of the flight. But then when I wake up, I just feel a lot more calm, a lot more mellow. Always make sure that you have a person with you if you take it because you might have a bad reaction. Not saying like you'll die or anything, but you know, you might do what I did once and that's like drool all over yourself. So if you hate flying like me, that has worked for me and hopefully it can work for you. My next hack involves packing. Now, I kind of don't use this hack all the time. Sometimes when I'm just like fed up with packing, I'll just like throw piles of clothes into a suitcase and then like sit on it and then try to shut it. Uh, but when I do actually try to pack things like a reasonable human being, there is a technique that I like to use and pretty much you just roll your clothes into like little burritos and that helps you utilize more space in your suitcase. Also another good thing to do is if you have any perfumes, liquids, or gels, put them into a Ziploc bag because you might think they're not going to break. You might be like, no, nothing bad can happen. And then you'll open up your suitcase and there's toothpaste all over everything that's happened to me. So put everything into a Ziploc bag and then roll it inside those clothes burritos. Also make sure that any of your gels, liquids, even makeup is packed in the center of of your suitcase. Don't let it be near the sides. Have you guys seen what those baggage handling people do at the airport? They like literally throw your shit around. They just have very little regard for your personal possessions and if it says fragile, you're probably even more inclined to fuck with it. Another hack that I have for you guys is when you get to the airport or train station or whatever other freaking station there is, always wear a coat with big pockets, preferably pockets with zippers, and wear a backpack. I'll show you guys which backpack I have. Not to brag, this is pretty much like the coolest, awesomest backpack ever. It's also a Louis Vuitton. I mean, I don't expect all of you guys to go out and like buy a Louis Vuitton backpack, but I really recommend bringing a backpack as your carry-on because it frees up your hands. And as you guys know right now with the Titan security, you want to be able to reach into your pockets and grab your boarding pass and your passport very, very easily because you've got like 30 people asking you for your passport. Like, yes, Sir, ma'am, I am a citizen of the United States. Thanks for asking for the millionth freaking time. This is the coat that I wear to the airport. It's a Burberry. I feel like it's a very great traveling coat. It also has very deep pockets. Okay, so if you have been on a plane, you know that when the cabin pressure changes, it messes with your ears and that's really annoying. One thing that's a really good remedy for that is by chewing gum. So always make sure that you have gum. Another thing that I've noticed, I tend to gain weight when I fly and that's just because when you're up in the air, so high up, I've actually researched this, uh, your body is dehydrated. So you, you retain the water that you intake, I guess, if you don't drink enough water. So drink a lot of water on the plane, but then also like don't drink lots of water if you're in like a middle seat because then you're gonna have to keep on telling Fred to get up so you can go to the bathroom and then Fred will eventually resent you and try to sabotage you. Bye.
I don't know, by maybe farting a lot. Another hack is to wear slip-on shoes. So like, don't wear any elaborate shoes with like laces or like 30 buckles on them because when you go through security, it's literally so annoying. Usually they will make you take your shoes off unless you're like a special privileged person that doesn't need to take their shoes off. I've noticed those people and those people, Lucky you. I guess they trust you, but they don't trust me. So wear slip-on shoes. I like to wear flats. They're just like easy on, easy off. And then when I get on the plane, I like to take my shoes off. I know that might be weird. Next hack is seriously a godsend. I just learned about this two days ago. If you are traveling from Europe to the United States, you do not want to wait in a customs line. That's like 45 minutes long. When I got to JFK, there was a sign that said, Customs wait time, 35 minutes. So like after my nine hour flight, I was just like, well, that's fucking terrible. But no, we were smart, we got this app. So basically the way that this app works is you scan your passport and you submit it to customs when you land at the airport. So like as soon as your plane gets onto the ground, you turn your airplane mode off and you submit that information to customs. And then what happens is when you go to the customs line at the airport, they have a separate line just for this app. And basically you just show it to the person and they scan it and you go. And there was a line right next to us with the people who didn't have the mobile app that were waiting in line for customs. And I just breezed right by them. Like literally I, I went through customs in two seconds, like literally just like like that I couldn't even believe it like I walked through and I was like that's it really and then I looked over at the people in line and I was like bye bitches and then the last thing I'm gonna talk to you guys about is not really a hack but I'm just gonna give you guys some information about how I traveled with my dog because a lot of people have been asking me how I traveled with Frank so I'm gonna give you guys some information if you want to go on vacation with your dog First of all, there are some places where you just cannot take your dog. For example, like certain islands, Australia is very tough, Hawaii, nearly impossible, but it can be done if you start the process very early on. So if you know you're flying in like three to four months, make sure to go to a veterinarian that is licensed to do this sort of thing. Just call up the vet and be like, hello, does your veterinarian have a license to do international travel? And if they say yes, go to that person. They're going to go into their little computer thing and they're gonna look up the countries and based on what country you are traveling to, they're going to tell you what you need. Some countries are very tough, especially if you're coming from the United States. We have rabies here. Other countries don't have rabies because they're better. Most of the other countries I've traveled to, you'll need a microchip, rabies vaccination, you might need a deworming treatment, and you will also need your pet to be neutered. And then you'll also need some other shit. Then the veterinarian's going to fill out some paperwork. Then you're going to need to overnight that paperwork to the federal veterinarian in your area. I don't know where that is. For me, it was Albany, New York. Then the federal veterinarian is going to look at that paperwork and be like, mm, okay, this pet is okay to fly. They're gonna put a stamp on your paperwork and sign off on it. And then they're going to overnight it back to you. And then that is the paperwork that you need for your pet when you get to the customs of whatever country you are traveling to. But that is just for Frank. He is under 20 pounds, or at least we say he is. He's actually like 22 pounds. He needs to go on a diet. But uh, basically if your pet is like under 25 pounds, he should be okay to fly with you in cabin in a certified traveling bag that is usually like a Sherpa bag. You can find those at Petco or PetSmart. But that's just the one that I use because like on the bag it actually says like this has been approved by the travel association of the fucking universe. And usually that fits really comfortably underneath my seat. I give my dog a lavender collar and that has some pheromones and lavender in it so it really like chills him out. So he's okay during the flight. If your dog is larger than 25 pounds, they're going to need to travel under the deck. Honestly, like I don't recommend that. They like lose people's pets. Like pets can't handle the the air change or whatever. It's just not the safest thing. But most airlines that I have flown with have been very pet friendly. Virgin, Southwest, Delta, JetBlue, American Airlines, Swiss Air, Austrian Airlines are all airlines that I know are pet friendly. I'm sure Virgin Atlantic is also pet friendly. So just make sure you also ask the airline, call up the airline, tell them that you have a pet coming with you. It's going to cost you probably $100 each way. And if you have a service animal, it's free. And Frank is registered as a therapy dog, so he didn't have to pay anything. So yeah, I think that covers about all of the information. If you're thinking about traveling with a pet, hopefully that helps you guys out. Thank you guys for watching my travel hacks video. 
Make sure to like this video if you liked my travel hacks and to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. Bye. <laughs>